right, welcome folks. Hi, there's Beth. Carrie just signed on, um, and so she uh, she's working on technical things. So we'll do announcements while she gets that sorted out. But uh, yeah, so it, it's going to be a minute here while she gets the sound and everything set up. So um, we got uh, announcements that we want to talk about. Um, thanks to jo for joining us, everyone. Uh, and uh, for those who are curious, oh, good, we got our thumbs down already. Excellent. Good. Yeah. Now we can yeah, now we can was, go to work. Yeah. Before we even um, yeah. did anything, it was a thumbs yeah. down. So. Wh whoever it is, whoever it is, you know, if you don't like it, um, <clears throat> uh, on you go. Um, uh, last week's winners were Pat McCauley and Teresa Vickers. I'm sure you already have them. Uh, we sent them out Friday, so you probably already have it. Uh, but uh, congratulations to you guys. And then a drawing tonight, and it's up there at the top. Uh, Avlia is sponsoring this show. So Krista West, Avlia is sponsoring this show. And um, uh, giving away one kit tonight. I'm, par I'm parceling out the uh, Avlia kits, so only one tonight. Uh, but this oh. one is um, called Dorian Leaves. Dorian Leaves. Pretty. And it's kit, so the whole deal. So that's, uh, that's tonight. So you send your email to uh, Gary at WeTalkFiber.com. It's right up there. Subject is Avlia right there. And please just put the word Avlia in the subject line. For those people who are new, just put only Avlia in the subject line. And in the main body of your email, you put your name and address. And uh, that puts you into a special box. And then right after the show, I do the drawing. And then for everyone uh, who, is, who is new... The drawing is, is just for people who do the live show. So I do the drawing right after the show. So uh, you can sign up anytime, send an email anytime during the show, but it's just for live show people. So uh, uh, Gary at WeTalkFiber.com, Avlia, I do the drawing after the show, and somebody gets to win this kit from Dorian Lees. And that's you know that, that's the, the chart. It's the, the that uh, cloth that she uses, which is gorgeous cloth. What is that? I don't know, but it's lovely to stitch. Yeah, I forget um, the name of it. She calls it traditional ground ground color, but it, it, it's yeah, it's special. It's nice. It is yeah. nice. So that's the kit tonight from Krista West at Avlia. So we appreciate that. Um, all right, let's see if we can if we have Carrie. I'm going to add you, Carrie. There, all right, there's Carrie. Can we hear you? Hi, Carrie. She's frozen. You've okay. muted yourself. You're muted, Carrie. Um, okay, well, while she sorts that out, we got to keep moving or we're not going to have time for Carrie. Uh, you're still mute, muted. <clears throat> um, it's on your end. I can't control it. Um, so if you, I don't know if people have had a chance to listen to the podcast today. Probably not. Um, but uh, Friday night now, Friday night, Beth and I will be on again at the same time, 8 o'clock, same station, uh, and we're going to talk about our Painted Canvas project. So if you're curious about that or you've decided to join us, uh, 8 o'clock, we've got uh, feedback from, um, uh, what's her name? Jane? <laughs> Jane Wood. Jane Wood of Jane Wood's Chili Hollow Needlepoint Adventure. Um, uh so uh, we have feedback, and so we're going to talk about our, our canvases and uh, uh, the early stages of that. And um, you're still muted, Carrie. So 8 o'clock on uh, Friday night, and we'll do these live shows for this Painted Canvas project, and we'll announce them so that you know uh, ahead of time. Then next Wednesday, Kathy Ray will be with us for our regular monthly thread talk. Uh, and always open to ideas on the, um, on the thread talk. So if you have something you wanted to talk about, a, a type of thread, uh, problems you're having, uh, fire them at me. Uh, again, Gary at WeTalkFiber.com, fire them at me, and then I'll share them with Kathy. And then uh, she has a whole list, but we really would like to help people out in the audience who are uh, have questions. So uh, feel free to contribute ideas. We'll take them um, from, uh, for that. So that. And then on the 28th, the 28th, well, actually, the 25th, Cindy Lee Gershon 
who is a, a judge, uh, an EGA judge, will do the a Sunday podcast, and we're going to talk about all the things that uh, she encounters as a judge that w- aimed at helping you be a better stitcher. So she that'll be the Sunday show, and then I already have all the pictures. She sent me all the pictures. Then on the 28th, we're going to have photos of it showing examples, and then she'll talk about them again. So you'll get a one-two punch from an experienced judge about how to improve your stitching Sunday and Wednesday with, with photos and her live to talk about. So you can ask questions. We're doing that. Then you can ask your own questions uh, of right. Cindy. So we'll have that the last uh, 25 and 28 of, um, of July. So that should be really excellent. Uh, and she's also a needlework appraiser, and we'll get a little into that, I think, in the podcast. But we're going to devote the Wednesday show to just helping you be a better stitcher uh, by learning what a judge sees and what ju- a judge expects. So um, let's see. Carrie, uh, test again. Uh, no, still muted. Still muted. I got. I got no. I can see you, but I can't hear you. Um, so that's the 28th, and then on the 30th, this is a month packed. On the 30th is World Embroidery Day. And so Beth and Jennifer and I, Jennifer is back from her like 20 year vacation. (laughs) Uh, But Beth and Jennifer and I are going to do a three hour show from 2 to 5 on Friday afternoon, the 30th, from 2 to 5. And it's just going to be a stitch and chat. So, but we're going to have designer guests. So Natalie Dupuis is going to be the first hour. And then I'm waiting to hear from some other people. Uh, so we'll have a guest each hour with, with the three of us. So it'll be just a fun afternoon of stitching on World Embroidery Day. Uh, as Beth said in the podcast, you know, that people are encouraged to stitch out in public. Uh, I, not me. That ain't happening. So this is just a chance for you to stitch with friends. We'll have the live audience. You can ask questions, so on and so forth. But that'll be on the 30th, Friday afternoon for three hours and then we'll have uh, uh, three guests. I'm just waiting to hear from the others, and then we'll let you know who they are. So um, uh, join us for that. Join us for that on the 30th, World Embroidery Day. Sunday's guest is Melinda Sherbring, and that's going to be fascinating. I was doing research this morning on her. Uh, that's holy smokes. She's interesting lady. Yeah, because she does. Uh, she has this personification. What is that called? Um, I, I always call it the Society of Creative Anachronism, isn't it? The Society. That it? sounds right, she's, yeah. She's, she dresses up in period clothing. Right. And she's yeah. built this persona and, of herself for right. someone who lived in that time. And then that's right. how that's what got her started doing needlework. Mm-hmm. So yes. uh, I can't wait to talk. We're talking to her Friday. Can't wait to get yeah, to I'm it. because Yeah, yeah. That's going to be riveting. Cause, cause, all that that history that she knows right. and that she's she's taken and applied it to what her clothing i just, and you, i just think it's yeah i can't yeah. wait to talk to her yeah it's going to be great so that's the sunday guest going to be most fascinating okay and then let's see you're still muted uh, carrie i don't know i don't know what to do um then the big thing that uh if you listen to the pod here's carrie again hang on while we get carrie started Okay, Carrie, you're still muted. You're muted all the way around. <clears throat> um, Society for Creative Anachronism, Sandy P, is to the rescue. Thank so, you, sir. Thank you. Sandy P, saving the day. So um, we'll be experts on Friday after we talk to her, but until then, we're just novices. Uh, right. <laughs> but um, most fascinating woman. So that's Monday or Sunday. And. Um, then the big thing that we announced uh, today in the podcast is that Jennifer, Beth, and I will all be at the uh, EGA seminar in September, the first week in September. So we're going to be there live. We're going to do live shows. We'll have a live show every day, and we'll do interviews. And we'll basically we're going to bring you as much of the seminar as we can uh, through video, uh, either recorded video or live video, and. Um, so that we'll have more information on that as we get the, the plans put together. But we're all traveling to Chicago to uh, to do that, and so we're really excited to to um, uh, share that with you. 
and you know there's so many people can't go and of course registration's closed now and uh, right. so nobody nobody additional can go but um, we'll have that <clears throat> for you uh, during the show yeah it'll give you a taste it'll give people a taste for it, it you know it it sometimes it's hard to get to seminar but then you'll at least know what it's like and if it's in your area you'll know why what to expect if you if you are able to attend so yeah yeah that's a good point yep it'll give you a chance yeah <clears throat> EGA seminars in Chicago Sandy <clears throat> um, oh and uh, I do also want to say I'm always negligent because I'm always anxious to get to the agenda of the shows uh, so many people with prayers and um, uh, well wishes during my illness and as it turned out I basically uh, well Beth and I were talking ahead of time I've been sick for much longer than I realized and basically had pneumonia and uh, now I'm pounding down heavy uh, antibiotics you couldn't get me infected if you tried um, but uh, clearing up nicely now I didn't have to go to the hospital so thanks so much to all the people who've written kind things and prayed for me I really do appreciate it because uh, it was ugly. It was flat out ugly, and um, uh, I'm able to at least some, be semi-functional now. So, um, the bike bike riding will resume. A couple weeks. I I think I got to wait a couple weeks, so I can't I yeah, can't take no. a chance. Yeah, it was bad. No. So thanks to no. um, uh, thanks to everyone with the kind thoughts and and prayers, um, especially the prayers. Boy, I I tell you, I can't tell you how much I appreciate. That so uh, on the mend here. Um, let's right. see if, if we and have. And he is asking a quick question. Yes. He wants to know why don't you stitch in public? <laughs> yeah, cause I'm male, and yeah, it you gets get asked, it, it gets weird. It get, gets weird looks, and it makes me uncomfortable. And I'm not. Even though we do this stuff, I am really not a very outgoing person. Um, in yeah, which I know is a complete contradiction to doing all of these things. And I got a friend of my ours in the family who uh, she always comments, "How do you do that stuff? You never talk to anybody." And well, I don't know, uh, but uh, yeah, so it's it makes me very uncomfortable, and so I I, I just don't do it. <clears throat> um, it's a thing, can't help it. Um, we got we got to get some sound out of Carrie here. I, I got nothing, Carrie. It says guest has muted themselves. We can see you talking, but we got nothing. Nope. Inherited, inherited stitches. I'm female and people gawk at me no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh. So. Um, and, and the thing is, even now it's hard to, you know, to gather. Some people just aren't comfortable still meeting. Yeah. And. Right. So this is a great way to celebrate World Embroidery Day. Still Three muted, Carrie. Stitching, how can it wrong? Still muted, Carrie. I can't. I don't know. I, there's nothing I can do on this end. Hmm. I don't know. So hang uh, up and start again. She did. She just did and came back in. And it still says it's muted. Hang up on that. Oh, there you are. Now you're. Can you not. hear me now? Yes. Ah. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, I shouldn't. I shouldn't laugh, but you know, I work for the phone company. I think it's a miracle the phone works each and every time we pick it up. So okay, now if we got to get your camera if we're going to show stitching, right? So you're try yes. That. Okay. All right. Um, so um, while she sorts that out, um, I'm gonna um, now I'm gonna mute you, Carrie. Oh, I can't. I can't mute you now that you're live. I can. I can mute you. I can mute my. Okay. All right. Mute you. While you sort it out, and then you can do what you need. Um, so that's all the announcements uh, for this. Uh, and also had several people with suggestions for guests. And uh, that has been a real help because a lot of them have been uh, people I've never heard of. We got some last week in the show. I've written to all those people. Um, all right, now... Okay, there's Carrie twice. Talk, Carrie, talk. Now you're muted both times again, Carrie. Is we this can, better? There, now we got it. Outstanding. Okay. Outstanding. Now all I gotta do is get the camera in the right spot. Okay, you sort that out. 
Um, so uh, we got lots of names last week. I've written to all of them, heard back from a couple, but it's been really helpful uh, because we've got several people that I have not heard from or have not tried. There's a lot of people that I try and, you know, hear from them. They don't respond, whatever it is. But uh, so uh, guest suggestions are always appreciated. And um, uh, so thank you for that because we've had a good run here recently uh, with, uh, with some people. So thank you for that. Um, and, oh, you were going to show while, while we're waiting on, uh, uh Carrie here, uh, Beth, did, the chili hollow thing you were working on, did you put that yeah, away? I can, no, it's sitting right here. Hold on a second. I'm going to move you. Okay. Gonna, Josie, I, Josie asking if I started stitching. I stitched last Wednesday and no, I have not since because I, over the weekend I got really sick again. That's where we discovered the pneumonia. Uh, so I was shut down again, and now uh, I will, I'm going to do some actual stitching this weekend. And then Monday, the guy comes and puts in track lighting and a ceiling light in my studio, so I can't get a bunch of stuff out. And then after that, I'm free to go. So I'm getting there. It's getting close. Um, here, I'm going to put you, uh, Beth, I'm going to put you uh, full screen here. It's really sad All when right. I get excited here. Okay, I'm hearing you, Carrie. Uh, okay, Beth. All right, so that's chilly hollow. It seems a little, I can't, I'm, I'm trying to watch. It seems, can you see that with my yeah. finger? It seems yeah. a little tight, but I think it's okay. It looks okay. Um, it's a little bumpy here. Yeah. I got a, a, little I got a test. I, I'm, I'm going to do a test and see what happens to me, and we'll talk about it Friday. Okay. Right, because it's well, it's tough. If you said it's tight, have you used them all to open up the hole? Um, but you don't go through the canvas. Ooh, that's a different problem then. Yeah. Right. That right. looks that looks good though, huh? I mean, it's kind of moving and around, so, so it's not staying focused. But uh, oh, oh, how's that? Back up a little bit. It's kind of funny. Not Maybe funny. it's because there's. It's canvas, more, I can't. Yeah, the canvas it's, is it's messing pixelated. up. It's Yeah. Yeah, I don't have anything underneath it. Yeah, okay. Well, I'm going to play, right, though. Now, now, now I'm really curious now, so. Um, oh, upside down. Now it's all Beth all the time. Oh, there. scary. <laughs> Thanks. Now, now it's just one, a third of you. Um, now, can you see the, can you see my hoop? Um. On my other one? No, I lost. See, I lost the. I lost the uh, the second cam. The camera feed. Hmm. Now it's just your face. I you know we lost the camera feed for your stitching. Just a second here. I don't know what my phone's doing. It's a little confused. What? Wonder if we want to try this another night when we've had a chance to practice. It may be that's going to be our problem because I don't. Because it's 20, um, 20 after now, and we've got an hour plus of, of demonstration. So. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oops. Oh, we'll come back. There we go. Does that work? There. Success. Okay. All right. Oh, well, wait a minute. I got to mute something here. Yeah. Is that better? Is that better? Is that better? No. Oh. Technology. It works sometimes. Yeah. Okay. Does that work better? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Then we're gonna we're, we're gonna start. But now, can you yep. shorten this up and so that we can finish yep. shortly after uh, after the hour? Then. Okay. Yep. All right. I'm gonna so. put uh, I'm gonna put your camera on um, full screen. All right. That's Beth. Don't move, Beth.
Hi. There. Oh, now it's vertical. What? You want me to turn it? Yeah. Is that better? No, I need you to turn the camera. It's, it's, it's just a slice down the middle. Uh, I'm not sure how far the ball is going to turn. You can see all the crap on the floor around me. And I just paused. No. Completely locked up. Let's see if this solves my problem. <gasps> there we go. It's like a bandwidth issue because I was on the Wi-Fi. I mean, I've got the Wi-Fi. I've got, I was on the uh, cellular network. I must complain when I go to work tomorrow. Yeah, this is not uh, here. Yeah, it's like I don't have enough bandwidth. No. Let's, Carrie, let's, uh, I'm yeah, sorry. We'll, we'll give up. I'm sorry, yeah, folks. No, no, no. Uh, let's, we, we can't sit here and fumble like this. Um, it, it, Carrie wasn't able to, to do a test ahead of time. So um, uh, when we normally would work this out. So let's let's kill this off and we'll try it in a few weeks when I have a an open slot so that we can test and make sure that we don't yes. and I was going to say Gary next time can you call me if I don't you don't hear me back hear back from my email cuz I don't know what Comcast is doing okay. they seem to be eating your emails okay well all right so sorry folks we're going to we're just going to kill this off I'll just sign you off Gary sign yourself off we're just going to kill okay. this off and then we'll come back uh, I what? do have one thing though when you guys were talking about you couldn't get your stretcher bars put together you put them in the oven at like 250 for a little bit and dry them out and then they'll oh. go back together, no problem. Okay. Thanks. Okay, good tip. All right. Thank um, you. Sorry, folks. Sorry but we're about gonna, all that. Yeah, we just can't. Uh, uh, we can't do this. So. Oh, okay. So, so um, yeah, we had not heard from Carrie, and um, so Beth and I prepared some other things just in case she wasn't able to do this because we didn't know she was sick or something. So uh, the show's not wasted. Don't go away, except the person yeah. who the person who did the thumbs down. You go away. We're, 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 yeah, we're, we're good without you. Um, spare me. Um, so Beth and I talked about one of the things that we got uh, prepared. Beth and I talked about on the podcast today, and we've done this before, but uh, it, it, there's always new people. These adjust a frame stretcher bars, which we just love. And if you want to order them. here, I'm going to take you off here, Beth. Okay. If you want to order, this is what it is. I'll hold it up here. Adjust a frame. Gary Kaufman is the guy. And it's MCGC123 at SBCGlobal.net. Not that number sign. I don't know why he did that. Yeah. There, adjust a frame, Gary Kaufman, uh, MGC, MCGC123 at sbcglobal.net. You send to him, and he will send you a price list back. And then you order these uh, uh, stretcher bars. And they're wonderful stretcher bars. Yeah. And, yeah. And so the, I, I got a set of four out so that we could show how to put them together. So they come like this. So one end is like this. It has this dowel and a hole. And then the other end has this metal mechanism and a hole. And so the dowel goes in the hole, obviously, uh, you know, hello. And then the, the, you can see that the little knob on the, um, uh, the metal part, that goes in another hole, okay? So that's your hole. And then you take a little wrench, and you can get the wrench from him, and you turn the little nut in here. And that's what expands this to stretch your, uh, to stretch your canvas. 
okay? Or no, <clears throat> no. <coughs> I take that back. You don't turn the nut. You put an Allen key in this end, and that expands. Right. It. What am I? Right. What am I doing? The nut just tightens That's it after you get it tightened. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you just turn the Allen key on the outside, so it's really easy to get to, and then you put these together like this. Okay. But now the the problem you're going to have is you're going to put it together like a normal person, and you're going to go to put the fourth piece in, and it's not going to go together. It it doesn't work. So what you do is you make two L's. Here, I'm going to back up. You make two L's, and then you, you put them together. You're square. Get in there. And now you have it. And then you just turn the Allen keys. Uh, I always do it opposite corners. These, these two corners, and then these two corners. So you're stretching your canvas fairly even. And watch that. And then, um, uh, then you'll get it. You'll get it drum tight. No problem at all. Yeah. It, it, there, it's a nice system. It's a nice system. And and he's very he's he's fast at responding. You know, and he yeah. has lots of size. I mean, he has a, he has a huge range of sizes. Um, I bought the the eights to go with my Gay Ann Rogers heart set. So. Yeah. And, and they're, they're raw wood, pine, sanded smooth as can be, like as smooth as you're going to get pine sanded without standing there with a 300 grade thing and polishing it. Um, so you're not going to have any snags uh, at all. Uh, they're beautifully done. Now, I'll, I'll try and show. Here's, here's why I buy them an inch smaller. We talked about that. I buy them an inch smaller. So like if you have a 10 by 10 uh, piece, I buy 9 by 9s. And your mileage may vary, as I said in the podcast. But the reason I do that is you can see where I've used this, you can see how far into the wood the tacks go. And that's from this side, okay? Not from this side. That's from this side. So I've got all this canvas laying on wood. Do you? So how wide do you think they are? I mean, I don't have I mine don't, up here. I don't think, but I can measure because I have okay. a handy handy measuring device right here. They are um, one and a half, one and a half inch wide boards. Right. So, like, I have Evertites, and they're just they're like an inch. So you're you've got a lot more space to have your tacks. Yes. You know to put your you know a lot more wiggle room there. I like that. I like that. Yeah, and that's why I buy them. So so you get and the reason I do that. And that was just dumb experimentation on my part. The reason I do that is I feel like if I've got that much, if you can see it, if I have that much canvas laying on the board all the way around, I feel like I have a more stable platform for the canvas to be on. It's right. not clinging right. to the edge. And so I feel like it stays better. Uh, so that's what I do. Now, you, you, you may prefer to buy the size, like 10 by 10, you may prefer to buy 10 by 10. That's up to you. I'm just saying this is what my experience has been, and it's worked well for me. Um, so, yes. And then, it, then uh, and because you've used these quite a long time too, Beth, right? Right. Well, and I used I used it for my um, the heart, um, the Gay Ann Rogers Amber Waves. It was nice. And then I I put the Dawn to Dusk on a set. And that's that's a huge piece, so I wanted something, and so I liked it that it had those big wide space to tack in. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, and Evertice is still out there, um, and so it's. Yeah, you can it, still get harder Evertice. to get. And, and there's you nothing know, wrong with Evertice. There's nothing wrong with Evertice. We just feel that these are are a better product. Um, right, right, and 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 it's hard to get them. And sometimes, if your shop doesn't happen to have your size, you can wait a while to get them ordered in if they don't have what you want. Or search in every shop. Yeah. So. And he makes these to order. Uh, like I mean, I used to, like I said in the podcast, I used to live about ten miles from him in Illinois, and I would email him late in the day, and then uh, the next morning he would say, "Come pick them up." 
uh, he would, you know, I mean, he's that quick. And, and you live uh, where you live in Illinois, a male is a, a bit on the slow side and you get them right. still quickly. Yeah. Right. A couple of weeks, I think at the most, it wasn't, it wasn't long at all. So, yeah. and, and it's wood and it's heavy to ship, but wood's heavy to ship. So. Right. What you can do. <laughs> no, I'm not making my own. No. <laughs> Jeez, I look sickly and pale. Man, I look disgusting. Sorry. I got to get outside. You know? Uh, well, you know, and you now have, now you don't have an excuse. You don't have a lawn to mow. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Nothing. Uh, Nothing. I'll get there. No, 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 no siding to paint. No, no. I'm not see, going outside. See, you're missing, see, you're missing all the fun. No, I've, I've heard your siding painting story. No, I'm not missing that fun. No. No, no, no. no. Good, good for you, Beth. More power yeah, to you. Pulling weeds. Yeah. Pulling weeds. You're yeah. missing that one, too. No, I'm not. Yeah, no. all, the, all the fun stuff. No, all the fun. No, no, no. I'm good. I'm right. good. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, Sharon, see, uh, and Evertarts are, are hard to get. Uh, they really mm -hmm. are. So, um, yeah, we just feel like this is a better product. And suggest you check it out. Here, let me put, for those who didn't get it written down, Here's here it is again, so you can get it. It's mcgc123 at sbcglobal.net, Gary Kaufman. And then he'll send the price list, and that'll give you all the sizes and everything. And I suggest you buy the toolkit the first time. He sells a little toolkit. Buy the toolkit, then you have the proper tools to uh, adjust your frame. And it's a one-time purchase, so it works for all of them. Uh, so right. worth it. Worth it for that. Yeah. So, and there's a link. I put a link in the podcast today uh, at wetalkfiber.com and on the YouTube channel. Uh, so you can get the, the email address there or share it with others. So, um, <laughs> Ivy, set it's up a nice chair. Ivy, I moved to I moved to St. Louis. It's hot and humid. It was 90 and... There was water dripping from the sky and it wasn't rain. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. <laughs> Sweat on silk, not a good thing. No, <laughs> no, no, uh, no. Just have to wait till you can bike right again. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll sweat wait, all over so, my bike. Yeah. Someone wants to see our canvas. Do you have your canvas? Yeah, close? I do. Yeah, it's right here. Okay, I got to grab a piece of paper <clears throat> to put behind mine since. Oh, obviously. Now you stitch in the well, I bet. Yeah, yeah. And I don't. Here, let me put you up full screen first. There you go. Okay. I love that. Back up. Yeah. My son has said, Sam, um, he had a bearded dragon at one point. So when he saw it, he said, um, are you stitching that mom? And I said, yes. He goes, can I have it when you're done? And I was like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I've, I've got an idea now for, let's see, um, this guy's head. Someone suggested, cause I thought, you know, it's a, um, a horny toad or some sort of thing that ha that neck ruffle goes out. She said, we have a, a friend who does a lot of beading in our guild and suggested I ask her if there's a way to make a ruffle with a beading oh. and how hard it would be. Oh. Oh. So, so, so then it would really lay on top of whatever I stitching I put underneath. Oh, that would be cool. Yes, yes. <laughs> so. <laughs> I really like and the border beaded. on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the border is cool, and I'm not yeah. really sure what to do about that. And yeah, but and the snake. Yep. With his little red. Road stitches for the diamonds, no doubt. Yes. Yes. I'm just, yeah. I just gonna. I, I'm ready to start on this thing. Like, I, like I don't have enough projects right. started. Right. Yeah. So that's gonna be oh. really cool. And see, that's what I like mm -hmm. about both. That's what I like about both of ours is there's areas to develop the stitches. You know, there's solid right. areas. So we can put a stitch in and actually develop it whether, rather than just compensating or giving up and doing basket weave. Right. Right. 
and and this this guy over here this uh, not here this guy here he has to he's going I don't like all the stripes so he's he he's going to be covered somehow cuz I don't like the coloring yeah. on him why does yours more a but like that's that? right. back back up a little bit and see if it there that's, that's yeah all of a sudden that went crazy yeah it did yeah so that's very cool yeah. yeah it'll be fun it'll be a fun stitch now which it, this is up you're calling this up because it really can I go have anyway, to look at right? The campus. Right. So I normally put there, there's a salvage. Yeah. So I always put that to the left. Yeah, I do too. But that can go right. any orientation, right? Right. So it could go like this. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, crazy. That's a whole different That's look. Up. Yeah. Right. So I don't think it matters as I stitch it. I'll have to decide. Yeah. What I'm going to do with it. But yeah, I always put the salvage on the left too. Right. And, and so that's always how I determine up and down when I'm stitching stitches. Right? Yep. Exactly. Um. Oh, and, and uh, for anyone who is a beginner at, at this kind of canvas work, uh, lots of tacks close together like that. Right. All the way around. And, and my blue... And my blue tape, which you don't like. <laughs> no, it's no, it's all right. I just use artist tape, which is white. But no, that that doesn't leave any residue behind. Um, no, it does not. But masking tape does, people. So as long yep. as you're willing to cut that off, you know, yeah. be prepared to cut it. But lots of tacks. Anyway. Lots of tacks. Lots of tacks. In fact, this could use more. I, I actually tacked it down. I, I wanted to be able to look at it. And I'm I'm thinking... I was looking at it the other day, and I'm like, did I get that on square? Because it doesn't quite look square to me, so I might be taking it off and trying again. I was kind yeah. of in a hurry. Yeah. But that's all right. That's a that's a quick fix Yeah. before Friday. Sandy's saying, would making a ruffle need some sort of wire to make it stand up? I was wondering that same thing, if it would. Um, it might. We've talked about that. I, I, I even that was my original thought was doing yeah. some sort of needle weaving, doing a free form with a wire. And that's when she said the beads. No, the beads might be um, have enough structure. I've made box. You can make boxes out of beads. So they should be. If you get a good enough tension on them, they should be OK because you can make. Well, EGA even had a class going where they having um, different could do different beads that were geometric. Yeah. And they were hollow inside, but they were a hard shape. Uh-huh. So you would get your so lift I would that think way. ruffles. Right, right. Right. I don't know and why I had salvage. to do that with my hand when I said you get your lift. It's kind of like a parade thing, but anyway. <laughs> right. And someone asked why, okay, so Ivy asked why do you put your salvage to the left? Um, I think it's just, however you decide to do it but i always was taught it's the way the warp and the weft go and if you're putting tension on the threads when you're pulling your stitches it keeps it from distorting as much that's what i was taught too yeah put it to the left and now like this canvas doesn't have selvage on it it was cut further over and um i hope that but it's painted i mean it can only go one way so I hope that right. the salvage was there. But it, I, I think in the big picture, it, if you got it properly tensioned on your uh, stretcher bars, you're probably okay. But, yeah, I was taught the same thing. It helps it stay more stable. Um, and, I, and I think it was more when they used to do – everything used to be pretty much basket weave, tent, and continental. Yeah. And then, I mean, you know, you hear horror stories about the <clears throat> an ornament that was round being oval. <laughs> My first needlepoint piece, when I took it off the stretcher bars, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> and yeah. and it wasn't going back. I, you could no. you could block it till the cows came home, and it wasn't going back. No, because I had no, no. clue about no. tension, and oh man, it just <clears throat> diamond shape. Have a good day. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Done. Done. Yeah. So. Never forget that. That taught me tension in a hurry, um, and that was a thirteen count piece. So there was already inherent flexibility in it, you know, and it just, yeah, it was no. ugly. No. Threw it away. Yep. So, so, so Ivy 
puts hers on the top, puts her salvage on the top. Mm. That's interesting. I'd never heard that. Mm. I'd heard left or right, but I'd never heard top. That's interesting. There's probably no right way. No. You know, just because that's the way it works. But, um, yeah. So, okay, and then mine. Here, I'm going to take you off now. <clears throat> okay. Mine, this is a Laurel Birch. Um, what's it called? Birds of a Feather something. I forget. You'd think I'd remember these things, but quite frankly. So this is... Uh, the story behind this is that uh, we had, at the Fox chapter, we had a, um, a lady pass away who had a large stash. And so it was given to the chapter. And um, uh, you could contribute to the memorial fund and then take whatever you wanted. The idea was for everything to go away so that the person who got handed all the stuff didn't have to store it in her house. Um, so I saw this because these Laurel Birch painted canvases are, are among the few that really appeal to me. I, I li really like just about all of them, and this one is, is is one of my favorites. So I grabbed it, and so this I you know I didn't have, so I didn't have to pay what this is actually worth, which is why <laughs> why I have it. But um, uh, again, you know, big spaces to develop stitches, and um, right. and and uh, what you were talking. About, tell me what you were saying again for these for these crests here. Just a minute. Let me get this. Okay, so. Because it was, we were talking. A, I couldn't look at mine when you were talking. Yeah. Okay, so we were looking at, so talking about um, the straw, the silk straw. Yes. And doing a huge, huge, um, like a long bullion knot. Yes. Um, with yeah, there's wait, no one can see me, but there's they're doll like doll needles is what they are, I think. But it you just wrap and wrap and wrap, and then you've got a carefully pull it off um but it makes a really really long and i don't know it, it still be will be tight so it might not be the look you want it might yeah you know what would be better though well i don't know i can i or i could see a long drizzle stitch too oh which give you a curl yeah and then tack it down because you don't want them all sticking up like right. crazy birds <laughs> Yeah. Although maybe you do, I don't know. No, no, I but don't. But if they were tacked down, it would be, it, it that's almost like a macrame stitch, the drizzle stitch. No. Oh. And if you tacked it down, and then it would be all twisty and thick. Hmm. <laughs> okay, that's the fun part. Yep. Right. Right. But, but also, you know, gimp. If you tack, you know, did a couching on some of those lines, and then something between yeah. it. Because see these these lines in between are painted gold, and so I was thinking about getting some kind of a a, a gold passing thread or something and couching it down. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, and a lot of the bird, a lot of the lines are are, are uh, edges are all gold, and so there's going to be some gold work for sure. Yeah. Right. And those little dots underneath their eyes, are you going to put little beads there? <laughs> I think so. Cause see, those are gold too. Yeah, I yeah, they go that. all the way around there. Yeah, so I think I'm and gonna have to. It would just give a little, it give them a little texture, dimension. Right. Yeah. Yeah, these are all the things we're gonna have to. I, we're, we're gonna have to make lists. Right. Right. And Carrie just suggested for mine. I gotta put my the, arm down. Um, what was it? The a woven pico for the ruffles. Oh, which would oh. also be interesting. Oh, that could be fun. Yeah. Right, because just tack it down and weave that in. Yeah. Now, Josie, that's a good question, and that's part of what we're going to learn. Because, see, normally I'm a top left person. But I think from what I've learned about doing this kind of work is you have to uh, you stitch according to what you want to come to the foreground and what you want to go to the background. So if it's a foreground, you want to stitch that after already doing a background section. Is that what you understand? That's what I understand. Yeah. So that's going and, to be a different and, experience. Right. And so for mine, I have all this huge amount of white, which I'm not going to do white, but it's a lot of background. So I need to start on that and get that 
pattern established. Yeah. Whatever stitch I'm going to do. Right. Which I haven't decided yet. But I have some options. I have friends sent me some suggestions. Oh, okay. Yeah. It, yeah so it's that's an experience because, like, for instance, these the veins and the leaves. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll want those to stand out. Or maybe I want them to recede, but they're black. You know, maybe I want them to be like some leaves are dented in where the veins are, and sometimes they're right. on top. So I have to make that decision, I think. And then I right. have to stitch accordingly. So. Right. And if you're doing something that's like, let's say you're doing like even a stem stitch, you'd probably want to lay, depending on what you stitches you put underneath there, if you did like a stem stitch down the middle. I don't know. Just yeah. a thought. That's the I playing mean, around. You're right, right, because you don't want to disturb the stitches. Like if you did a satin stitch or something, I don't right. know. Right, right. Yeah, now see here, here, around. inherited stitches. See, we forget, uh, some people have never done this kind of thing, Don't never been exposed to it. So inherited stitches, yes, it's needlepoint. This is pure needlepoint. And um, what we're doing, there, there's charted canvas work, Debbie Rowley, Curdy Biggs, uh, what Beth had up earlier, Royal Garden, that's charted canvas work. That's needlepoint that is all charted, not unlike uh, cross-stitch. And you can take uh, uh, cross-stitch pieces and do charted uh, canvas work with them, or you can take charted uh, canvas work and do uh, cross-stitch with them. Because they're solid grid, you can do that all you want. But this is, this is needlepoint on a painted canvas. And there's two ways that this gets done. Uh, the popular way these days is designers will do what's called a um, uh, stitch guide. A stitch guide, and so they'll tell you now it becomes a kit. They'll tell you buy these threads, do these stitches in these areas, and you just follow the you just follow the directions, and you end up with a piece like the designer saw it. And you can vary from it, and so on and so forth. But what we're doing is is really the harder way which is to look at this thing and then figure out what we want to do, what stitches we want to do, what threads we want to do to interpret the canvas the way we want to. And if you go to Needlepoint Nation and poke around there, you'll see a ton of people who are brilliant at doing this kind of thing. And they will take a canvas like this, and when they're done with it, it is alive. It is just absolutely alive. Right. Uh, you know, years of experience and knowledge uh, extensive stitch libraries in their heads, uh, know how to manipulate threads, all the things. Um, we're not that. <laughs> no. But that's what we want to ex experience with this. And so this is a pure needlepoint. And I saw somebody else had asked about cost. And, um, yeah, th these are expensive. This is what usually chases people away. So uh, I mm -hmm. don't know what this canvas costs, but it's, I'm, I'm betting it's a couple hundred bucks. Uh, right. for this canvas and then you you would take about that same amount in threads by the time you're done so right. a lot of these a lot of these bigger ones you're up pushing four or five hundred bucks for the piece and that's right. what chases people off because this design size here I believe is 10 by 12 is that the actual canvas or the, the painted area inside? the painted area is 10 okay. by 12 10 by 12 wow okay and then and then and it's solid yeah and so when you see people that have like 11 by 14s or stuff they have a major investment in it um right. it takes a long time to do them but a major investment um so yeah that that tends to chase people off because it is it can be expensive and the reason i have this like i said is i got it without having to pay the full price <clears throat> right and so and inherited stitches, you asked, um, is it satin stitch? No, it can be a variety of stitches. So, um, like on mine, let's see, this, I don't know, can you see the little red thing? Oh, well, I, I can if I put you full there. screen. Oops. Oh, there's Carrie. There you are. So, right there. Ah, wrong way. So, there's a, that's going to be a road stitch. And then I'm going to do some sort of diamond things in each of these blocks of co color, but it won't necessarily be satin stitch. So it can be very bumpy. The snake will be smooth. This this little guy is going to be bumpy with beads. 
so they can stand up off the canvas. Um, let's see. Well, my son did one years ago, and it's up high, and I'd have to climb on a ladder to get it. But um, his is, what did he do for his stitches? He did a Hungarian. So, yeah, that's more of a Bargello stitch that he did on his, which um, was like a, he was a caterpillar. But then he's got, no, it was, a, he just did Bargello all the way across it. I'm looking up at it, but painted canvases. So like, let's say you have a Santa one, which I love little Santa ones. Um, you can put all sorts of stuff for the beard. There's all sorts of different, there's a whole book on Santa beards. Yeah. Um, that you can, yeah. I, I, <clears throat> a lot of people do turkey work for beards mm -hmm. and cuffs and that you make right. loops <clears throat> here. If I'm going to hold out my hands and show, you'll make loops of various heights. And then you, you basically go through and give it a haircut. And then that right. gives you a fluffy, but then, yeah. But then you can buy the, the fuzzy yarns right. and then do, if you do a different stitch and then you just brush it with like a, a little toothbrush, it, it stands out. So, but it gives you a totally different texture and look than the, than the turkey work. Right. So, you know, there's, there's, that's what makes painted canvases interesting because it's not just doing one stitch you get right. to think about it you get to make some decisions for yourself and that, that's why in so. in the painted canvas world they're so popular is is mm -hmm. you're not just making x's you're not just doing satin stitch you can do whatever you want that interprets the canvas the way you see it and that's what we're right. doing um and because right. so, there's hundreds i mean there's books and books of stitches as we all know so then you go through and you say well this stitch like like best snake you know, this stitch says the snake the way I want to see it. You know, an Art Deco snake or however she sees it, then she chooses the stitches and threads to be shiny, matte, dull, bumpy, whatever, to give the snake she wants to show. And, uh, and so that's what we're doing. It really is, even if you never do one, it really is worth joining Needlepoint Nation on Facebook and just spending time looking at what some of those people do because it will blow your mind. It, it really is just amazing. They're really good ones. And they'll stand out. You'll know You'll know uh, someone who knows what they're doing with painted canvas immediately because it's unlike anything else. Yeah. Right. Right. <clears throat> so Someone was doing an octopus re recently, and I've been following along, and she's <laughs> almost done. And it was just fabulous. She had little spangles, I think, for the on the tentacles for the... Uh -huh the suction cups. Oh yeah. I think that's what she was saying. And it was just like, it was perfect. It was just perfect. <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah. no, don't look at that. Don't yeah. look at that. Yeah. Cause you'll stick stitch an octopus any day. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. But that, uh, uh, you know, yeah. cause, cause if you go to rainbow gallery, go to the rainbow gallery website and look at all the threads they have, that is an, a painted canvas playground. Uh, mm -hmm. Those the people who do that stuff well and, and do charted canvas too because Debbie Rowley uses that same stuff. But the needlepoint people, that's their playground is all those rainbow gallery and crinic threads. Uh, you know that's just where they live because that's all the all the treatments, the shiny, the sparkly, the stretchy, all of it. Well, I and, have two. Well, and I have two here because this is what I was using for um, the oh. Yeah. Royal Garden. And so, and I was, I've been thinking about this, even though I, I don't hate this thread, but the panache. Yeah. It's how shiny it is. Yeah. Oh, shiny. You can there see the shine on it. And it's so dark in this little corner. And then yeah. there's the, the, there's, there's sparkle even in this, um, silk lame braid, which is a fun thread. But this, this shiny one, the panache, I'm thinking for the snake. Because I always think of snakes as being kind of have a little shine on them when uh -huh. you see them, a little slime to them, slithering yeah. along, yeah. a little slime and shine. Yeah. yeah. So they might, he might, they might need to be rayon. Yeah. And as I say bad words while I stitch. Yeah, yeah, you'll want to be alone when you do those. Now, see, Sharon. <laughs> now, Sharon says this is needlepoint is way different than what I remember. See, and and you're you're dead right, right. Sharon. Because when I learned needlepoint, that was the first thing I learned, and it was painted canvas, but it was all wool. It was uh, Appleton or whatever wool. Um, and so you, you stitch basically, I mean, that, I learned uh, basket weave with wool. 
And I did many a painted canvas, uh, kits and otherwise, uh, with wool. And I, I really lost interest because there, it was boring, you know, because you'd stitch the design and that's where you got to use different colors. And then you would do the background. And it's all this basket weave. And after a while, it, it just, oh. The background, I never, I, I rarely finished one because it, just the same color just over and over and over. And no, today's stuff, these painted canvases, it's it's a whole different world because those threads didn't exist then. You know, it right. was all wool. And, um, uh, you know, that was back when I was uh, in my 20s. And yeah, so it's, you know, it's much different now. Yeah, much more fun. Yeah. Right lots and lots of things to do with them and lots of lots of interesting canvases i think if you what makes the other thing that makes painted canvas interesting to me is you can get like um there's some company that does they're now they're screen printed they're not actually i don't think painted on but like right. famous paintings right that you can interpret in needlepoint with different threads and yeah. then you have snarky sayings <laughs> Right. which is really popular right. right now. I've seen a couple that I want, I think I need to stitch for one of my sisters. Um, but so they're fun, a, a huge variety, huge yeah. variety, which also makes it, I think, interesting. And, and if you're going to do this, if you're going to do this kind of thing, make sure you get a, a hand painted, stitch painted canvas. Don't, don't, it, it's, it's much cheaper to start with a printed canvas, much cheaper. But, it will make you crazy because the lines will not be lined up with the grid of the canvas properly. And you won't know, you'll be constantly trying to decide where to begin and end a stitch, especially if you're compensating around curves and stuff. It will drive you nuts and, and you'll wish you'd spent the extra money for a hand painted canvas to do it. Trust me, I've done both right. and, and you'll, you'll regret it. Pay the money. And somebody said a canvas like this is 250 at um what was that who said that sandy 250 oh, stitch uh, therapy st yeah and i believe that yeah these are not cheap uh these are not at all cheap um but it's worth the money if you're going to do one of these things and you can get small ones like you, you can get ornaments that are 60 70 80 bucks you know you don't have to do this believe me if right. i hadn't gotten such a deal i wouldn't have this canvas um but you right. can get little ornaments and stuff to to learn on um, uh, the, um, what's the other shop here in St. Louis that's a charity? Um, oh, I know I've been there. Um, I can't think of it. There's a shop here in St. Louis and I'll think of it after we get off the air, uh, that it, it, it's a, they do a lot of fundraising. They do a Christmas ornament every year, a needlepoint Christmas ornament, and they're not all horribly expensive. And, um, so there's ways to do it and to get experience without spending a fortune. Um, but yeah, if you start looking at the stuff like Beth and I are doing, um, it, it is just, yeah, it gets pricey. And then all the threads and, and like, that's why we talked about today, we're gonna use as much stash as we can because uh, the thread costs like 250 canvas, you're gonna spend fresh threads, uh, a good 200, 250 again. And then if you go to frame it, that's another 200 bucks right. and, and yeah, it gets out of control. So. Um, okay. Sign of the arrow. That's it. Thank you. Yes. Google. Look at you. Look, Look at Google. you. Thank so, you. yeah. So sign of the arrow. That's if you want, they do a Christmas ornament every year. They're always very well done. Sign of the arrow in St. Louis. And um, uh, usually by this time of the year, they have the two to 2021 ornament available. So you can have it done by, by Christmas. So uh, that's a place to check it out. And they have lots of ornaments. And then uh, we talked about when I interviewed with Melissa and Megan, Megan, who owns uh, the Needlepoint Clubhouse here in St. Louis, uh, she has belts. Belts are really popular in the St. Louis area. And so you can buy belts that are, you know, the usual belt thickness and Needlepoint those. And those are painted. Uh, a, a lot of them are painted. Uh, so that's another way to do something without. And then the finishing is just somebody who puts the ends on. So, uh, right. There's ways. Right. There's ways. Um, right. Yeah. And and I know I did a dimensions kit for my daughter. She was insistent that that's what she wanted for her Christmas stocking. And some of the things I was just like, 
oh, this is so, I had, you know, ripping it out and you had a kid. So it's like, yeah. oh, you got to keep your threads. I was just like, oh, I was so yeah. frustrated by the time it was done. <clears throat> yeah. And then you know, an example of, of charted canvas work, like this is a Debbie Raleigh piece. So this is charted canvas work. And I'm using all all the different kinds of threads. Like there's there's uh, different kinds of threads in here, silks and krynic and and all that. And this is one of mine. Um, and that's so you get to use the same kind of threads in charted canvas work. They're just more geometric things. And here's here's road stitches right here. What Beth's talking about for her snake, those little bumpy yeah. things uh, in that center doing that. square. And they're they're cool stitches. That's a road stitch. So you can imagine that one of those each for the diamonds on uh, on best snake. Uh, hold hold your snake up again so people can mentally connect that. Yeah. Yeah. So see see those here. I'll turn them so they're a diamond. So you can see how see how cool that would be. Those little bumps as bands right. around the snake. That's going to be so cool. Yeah, and then I maybe a, that, that'll a, work. Yeah, a crinic in the white band there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so that's what we're talking about. Charted canvas, painted canvas, and then, um, uh, yeah, just how you go about it. Right. Yeah. So. It'll be fun. Yeah. For, we, we, we forget. we got to remember that. We forget. Pe some people have just never been exposed to this stuff, and so we need to right. explain. Yeah. So. Right. Um, so is, did we have more questions about uh, our painted canvas? I think I, that, that covered a lot. So so Friday night, Friday night show will be us talking about what we're going to do and speculating and sharing ideas about what we're going to do in the various areas. We won't conclude anything, but we're just going to talk about it. And then if you're and the reason we're doing this is when we talked about it last week on the uh, podcast, we both got our wheels spinning. And mm -hmm. so now that we've had some input from Jane Wood, then now we'll share those ideas. Because if you've got a sounding board, you can bounce off. So if you want to do this with us, um, uh, even if you know if, if you don't have your canvas, go somewhere and make a printout of one that you want to buy, and then join us, and then we'll bounce and bounce ideas, and, and you know, somehow we'll uh, we'll get some ideas going, and we'll get some books out with with some stitches in them. Uh, so you can see what some of those are, because I've got a few here. Um, but you, you you do, I know you do. Small <laughs> library. Um, but, yes. Yes. yeah, so we'll exchange ideas. So if you have one, just print it out. You don't have to go buy the canvas before Friday night. But just make a printout, and then you can make some notes, and you'll get some ideas. That's all we're doing, is we're just sharing ideas and thoughts about what we might and might not do. And then taking what right. Jane has given us. Yeah. Right. And, and hints for, you know, how, how to physically do, like there are, there are hints for, there's ways I know there's ways to make, when you do the background and you're going, I have lots of blank space and then I have a big object in the middle. How am I going to go all the way across and not get off on my stitch count? I know there's tricks of the trade for that. Yeah. I'm not yeah. sure what they are, but I know there are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, there's now some. Now, Sandy says, are there recommended books of needlepoint stitches? Tons of them. Car Carol yeah. Lake. Carol Lake is one. Uh, Lake, L-A-K-E. She has made done books for uh, different types of elements, like water, trees, grass. And so she, there's a, there are books for that kind of thing. Like if you, are, if you want to stitch sky, there are easily two or three books just with stitches for interpreting sky. Or just for interpreting water, or bricks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's all. There's. You could have a library and a half in your house of, of books. A lot of them, you know, thin books, but uh, they're ideas. Right. Yeah. Right. And and then there's the one book I always recommend to people if they're going to start doing needlepoint is <clears throat> the needlepoint book. The it's black covered. They have two editions. Yeah. At least two. Since oh, I have one, hang hang on just a second. Yeah, there's at least two. Hang on. <laughs> Have it here somewhere. Yeah, so I like I like the I, that one's the one I always wear and it, and it's it you can you can buy it off of probably off of Amazon the old copy black and white it's nothing doesn't look anything fancy for like five bucks but it has a diagram 
of the stitches of how to stitch, how to do them up at one, down at two. And then she also Joe, tells you if it's a Joe Hippolito a Christensen. Red Oyster. Yes. Yeah. Right there. That, I, this that is one. the this is the original. This is Oh that's really? A, you got an I mean this thing is ancient. Yes. And I like the list because if you look like she'll have like a diagonal stitch and some of them will be thread eaters. So like maybe you don't have a lot of a, a thread. You're like, well, I don't want to do that stitch because it's going to eat all my thread and I'm going to have to go buy another skein. <laughs> Seriously, it, it does. You, you can look at that and decide or you're you're planning your canvas and say, OK, I really like this stitch. So maybe I better get two skeins of this thread because this is going to eat a ton of thread. It's yeah. a thread eater. I mean, I, I just love that. Just that little bit of information in that or mm -hmm. it'll say it's textural or it's. Uh, it's it's smooth. It has all that information right there yeah. on one of those. Yeah, it it doesn't have a copyright date on it, but this is this is very old, very old. But yeah, here's here's what Beth's talking about. And and a picture. It's all black and white. Let me get here. Let me take you off. So they're black and white pictures, and and I can hold these things up because these stitches are universal everywhere. It's not like. I'm revealing the great secret of the of the Taj Mahal or anything, um, but it shows it shows how to do the stitches, where to come up, where to go down, what they look like in black and white, that kind of thing. And um, uh, but Joe Epolito Christensen, and you're right, Beth. I think there are certainly two editions of this, if not mm -hmm. three. Yeah, and if you see this I, book I, used, buy it. Right. It's it's really it really is a good book, and yes, you can paint your own canvas. Yes, I have done that. <clears throat> yes, I have you know given up my canvas all a big wash because I didn't have couldn't didn't have the right color. I had, I had white, and I just put paint on it. But that it is hard to do. Okay, so let's look at the back of mine. You can see. I don't know if you can see where is it? It's up in this corner. Um, there's black paint through. So I'm going to have to, some of the places, I think there's a blotch of paint. So I'm going to have to take a needle and go through them yeah, and get the paint out before I stitch. So it's not bad, but that's one thing. If you're painting your own canvas, now each, and it is thread painted. So there's the little black lines, let me flip this over, or even the white line on the snake. There's no, I can, I know exactly where I'm going to stitch on those areas. So if you paint your own, that's hard to do to make sure you're painting exactly where you want your stitches to go. It's not, that's why these are expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're hand painted. Yeah. Um, and that L takes literally, time. Literally hand painted. Yes. Literally. Right. 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 Yeah. Here's the it's back. Not, oh, here. Here's the back of mine. You can see the same. Same effect, yeah. Right, but you don't have mine has paint in the holes. Yeah, and I don't, I don't have think that. Yours does. No, I don't have any. No, so yeah. So I'm gonna go through and just I'll just take a needle and before I hit that stitch, I'll go through <clears> them <throat> and poke it out. Yeah, it's not a big deal, but yeah, it's here's, easy to do if you're painting. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Now here's another book that I pulled out. I have. Now that I have my little uh, bookshelf in my closet, it's so nice. This is a 70, 77 printing of a 73 book. It's called a pageant. And if you, if you see these old books, grab them because they do not get old. It's not like mm -hmm. this was in 73, so it's no more no, of no use. No, it's still very much of use. You just grab them because they're worth it mm -hmm. because they're just full of stitches. And this is the same, same kind of thing. So that, you know, the, the stitch, whoops, wrong way. And then pictures, this is in color, um, you know, how to do these stitches. And you just collect these books. If you're going to do any needlepoint, charted or painted, it doesn't matter. You just collect these books. And then when you're looking for different stitches, then uh, you just sit there in the recliner one night and just go through. And it's a lot of fun just to look at them. Yeah. Figure out what you want to do. Right. Right. And the other thing is... Um, 
Okay, I'll, I'll answer Ivy. I'll answer your question in a minute. The other thing is, there's some that some have gone to being digital and online and on Kindle. And I realized when I was traveling with my friends a weekend ago, I was like, I should have some of these books on my tablet, which I carry with me. And then when I'm on the go, my stitches are right there instead of me lugging books, which are heavy. Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. Oh, there's a, there's yeah, a good yeah. one. Yes, yeah, Susan. Excellent. Go ahead. So, so yeah, Ivy, it's there, there's no problems with there being paint on the back. It's just, it does clog the hole. So you're trying to pull the, um, the thread through. So you need to get the paint out of the hole before you can get your thread through the hole. Cause if not, it'll get paint on your needle, it'll get flakes on it. And then, yeah, you want to remove it first. Yeah. And Mary Legolay, uh, thank you, Susan. She is excellent. Follow her. Uh, Mary Legolay, I did a show with her a couple of years ago. Fascinating woman, but follow her if you're interested in stitches at all. Mm -hmm. uh, really, uh, mm -hmm. every every week, uh, something interesting. Um, oh, I, yeah, I read her stuff all the time. And thank you, Susan. That's a good suggestion because uh, she's a very talented lady. Yes, been doing it a long time. And I, I forget when we did the interview, but yeah, she was very good. Um, yes. But yeah, if, if you're going to do that stuff and want to do different stitches, grab those old books because you, know, you don't have to have a new one. Just get an old one from a used bookstore or something. Um, Arlene Cohen is a classic old book finder. Um, right. Uh, you know, and, and you build up a library and, and these books, you know, they work. You know, stitch doesn't change. And then we've no. got uh, coming up now, the Royal School now is putting together that gigantic database of stitches. And so that'll be yet another resource that we'll have. Right. Um, right. With videos. Um, that'll, that'll be great. Yeah. So, okay, so that's all that. Uh, well, now see, now here we are at 12 after 8. So um, I'll just, uh, one more reminder to win the um, Dorian Leaves, send your email. It's up at the top there, Gary at wetalkfiber.com. And subject Avlia, please just put Avlia in the subject line. Name and address in the body of the email, and then that will get you um, on the drawing when we get done here. But we did haul out um, some Karen Kluba pieces because we're doing Spring Hill, and Summer Hill is now available. Taking you off again, Beth. Oh, good. I I know it seems dumb to have to say to say that every time, but <laughs> I want Beth to know when she's on screen and when she isn't. Um, here is Summerhill. This is why we're so excited about Summerhill that goes with Spring Hill. So the same, uh, the hill at the bottom, but then a whole different pattern. And these are all the same size. Be all four seasons when she's done. Um, all the same size, all with this hill at the bottom in one form or another. And so this is Summer that just came out at the end of May. Oh, that is, that's just so pretty. I yeah. just think that is gorgeous. So now we're back to cross-stitch. No more needlepoint. Karen Kluber mm -hmm. cross-stitch. Yeah. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's very nice. I really like that. Yeah. And I like the different little, the little red bell flowers up on the, in the banding up in there. That's yeah. really kind of cool. Up in here? I like those. No, down. The, they're little. They're on... They look like little red, pink, purple. Maybe they're purple. On I can't tell. Oh, down here at the bottom. What are you talking about? Uh, in the middle section, above that, there's that big oh. flower oh. in the middle. Yeah, down. Yeah, I like them. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. But that's Summer Hill, so that's available. Uh, ours came from Sassy Jacks. Um, Kim has them. So uh, if you're interested in that, in doing the whole series. Uh, that's available now too. And then oh. what? what? The, uh, Sandy wants to know: Will uh, Needle in a Haystack do another special thing for Summer Hill? Haven't asked. She probably will. I'll make yeah. a note. I'll make a note because that was really so, fun. It, it was, and and I'm just wondering how different the colors are. 
than the ones I have. Yeah. On my hundred slash three. Yeah. Mm. I'll make a note. Uh, I'll ask her. We'll, let's see if we can set something up because I don't think she'll mind. I mean, what shop owner minds selling threads and canvas and charts, huh? So right. I'll write to her and see. Um, hi, Teal. Good to have you with us. Uh, thanks, Sandy. We'll, we'll check it out. Well, Josie needs another project. Well, there you go. Well, uh, Josie, let me see if we can help you out. Uh, here. <laughs> Need another project. Here's another Karen Kluba that we latched on to, O Feathers. How about that? See, and I forgot about it until you showed it just before the show. And I was like, oh, I remember that now. This is Beth's copy. Oh. Coming to Beth. So how about that one? And there's some, um, uh, she uses uh, sulky, uh, sulky threads. So she's got some uh, sulky threads in this thing. Uh, but, oh, nice. Yeah, how about that? I like that. Yes. So there's one, Josie. You know. In case you <laughs> needed something else. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh. So there's that one. But here now I'm, I got, so I'm not keeping up with the... Oh, it's all greetings for Teal. Teal's here. Yeah. All Teal's right. Teal's here. Yay. So there, uh, old feathers from Karen Kluba. Karen Kluba, best in the business, in my opinion, cross-stitch. Just my opinion, but um, I challenge you to find someone better. Variety. Her choice of colors. Her yep. choice of colors is just amazing. Yep. Just Constant amazing. variety. Constant variety. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, all cross-stitch, I believe. Pretty sure. Let me just do a quick... The, the the Spring Hill had the eyelet. Yeah. Which I changed to Jessica's. Right, yeah. We we've been monkeying That's with Spring crazy. Hill. Um, other <laughs> than I tiny, I was crazy. Yeah. Other than eyelets, Spring Hill is all cross stitch too. This is all mm -hmm. cross stitch. I don't see Yeah, I don't see any um anything else. And she pulls out ornaments. She has a little ornament in here. Uh, pin, color, pin pillow yep. or cover, needle book cover. Um, oh, what a great idea. Yeah. Uh, and then, okay, just just a little plug for Sassy Jack. She has that um, Valentine gift, gift exchange. Oh, no, that's not on her. You have to do one yeah. that's on her list for that, which is too bad. Well, here's here's bad, here's uh, here's three miniature ones that Karen put together out of out of old feathers. You can stitch yeah. these three complimentary uh they're all in. They're all in the chart. All in the booklet. So she put those together too. So you get the you get the chart for old feathers, and then you get the chart for each of those three. So there's really four different projects in here. Karen does uh, that a lot. Oh, here, Summer Hill, Summer Hill. Uh, right. Those those four, in addition to that. So she took she took that. Uh, uh, that flower right there that's that's upside down here and then took it and put it there see nice so that's you know, another benefit of these these Rosewood Manor Karen Kluba things she's always doing this stuff so you can you just have a lot of fun with this with this one booklet yeah so Nanette's asking have you been riding your bike yet no I haven't ridden in three months I can't, I can't, I can't, uh, I, now I can breathe, uh, well enough that I can, but, uh, no, it's, it's terrible. It drives me nuts. But Nanette, yes, I am feeling much better. Uh, I'm getting there, but I got it. I can't relapse. I can't relapse. No, no. And, and we've got someone from Auckland. Oh Auckland. my. Where's that? Erica. Erica, good to have you with us. Auckland, I have to place that. Help us. Yes. Good to have you with us. Why do we think that's New Australia? Zealand? New Zealand. New Zealand. Ah. Well, it's well, it's the middle of the day there. 
Yeah, of course she is. Good to have you with us. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't sure, know. <laughs> sure, we know our geography. Yeah. I need a map. Uh, okay. Our mind is on needlework. Not geography. <laughs> oh, and then the other thing I pulled out <clears throat> is we've talked about Botany Bay, Fox and Rabbit Designs, Brennan and Karen, uh, Kurt in, uh, in Australia. Um, not Auckland, but in Australia. This is the Botany yeah. Bay sampler that we're going to work on. This thing is wonderful. And you can get this, you can get this uh, at Sassy Jack's. And it, two months ago, it was the sampler of the month at the attic. So obviously, you can get it there, too. But I, I love that sampler. Those boats. Yeah. Or ships, whatever they're called. I don't, what do I know? But a boat fits in a and ship, but a ship can't fit in a boat. I think that's how it goes. So one of each. Oh, okay. I think that's how it goes. And there's all sorts of different stitches in there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, what's the chart say? I don't know. Now, uh, did Kim get you Cosmos for those? Uh, yes. Yeah, Kim put together a... She she couldn't do it all Cosmo, so it's a mixture. But yeah, I'm doing okay. this uh, um, this in Cosmo, but it's a it's a thick little chart. Yes, and there's lots of I mean there's information there's history yeah. in there too. Yeah, which I like. Yeah, here's like here they have some I can show these. So here's some pictures. So it's it's a really nice chart. Uh. Currently in the collection of the National Museum of Australia, Scottish sampler was stitched by Margaret Begbie, a 10-year-old girl from Scotland. The Australian colony established in 1788 stopped being referred to as Botany Bay around 1830, so this sampler most likely dates from the late 1700s to early 1800s. So, old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very cool. So when we talk about the Botany Bay sampler, and you see that at Sassy Jacks or at the attic, that's it. It's a beautiful piece. It really is. Lots of stuff. So, yeah, here, Kim, yeah, see, there's a lot of, the, the, the original spec, classic color works, gentle art, weeks dye works. And then Kim uh, put together a Cosmo set. So uh, over here, you can see where Kim gave me Cosmo because I wanted to do it in Cosmo. So those are all the colors that are Cosmo that she substituted for classic color works or Weeks dye works. And then she sent me just the, the spec ones because I wanted to do it in Cosmo as much as I can. But yeah, thanks for remembering that, Beth. Uh, so she set that all up for me. So if, if you want that, if you want to stitch in Cosmo threads, uh, um, just let me know. I'm sure Kim wouldn't mind me sharing her, uh, her thing. But if you want that, please buy it from Kim because she did put the work in. Right quite a bit so right. please buy from Kim and then I'll just share uh, with you the, the, the thread colors or I'll send right. it back to her so I'll, we'll, we'll work it out but if you're going to use what she took the time to put together please buy uh, from Sassy Jacks so that she benefits from uh, her efforts because that that's not always easy to do no it takes a lot of time yeah and Cosmos threads are just lovely to stitch <clears throat> yeah if you haven't tried them yet I don't I just I've enjoyed the, what I've done so far with them. Yeah, we're in the in the thread club, Kim's thread club, Cosmo, and um, beautiful threads. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, check that out too. I think she has a supply now uh, that she can do the um, the kits. Uh, do the the, uh, the thread club. club. Yeah. Club. So check that out too. Yeah. So what else we got going here? <clears throat> Well, Nanette's going to Oshkosh, so she's going to wave at you on her way through St. Louis. Wisconsin? Oshkosh, Wisconsin? Yes. So that's only one I know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, wave. Or stop, you know. <laughs> it's okay to stop. Stop and wave? Or just stop. Yeah. There, <laughs> you're back on the screen. Yeah. Because you were off all that time. So, um, yeah. oh, right. Oh, all right. One last thing, and then we're going to go. I think get your uh, get your things in. Um, 
uh, for the drawing. Don't forget, except you who gave us a thumbs down. You're not, you're, you're cut off. Um, don't. Yeah, don't. Uh, I have really been enjoying these. Uh, it's, it's, so, it's so Emma. Got them from uh, Kim at Sassy Jack's. Sounds like I buy everything in her store, but I really don't. Um, the stash in store. There's two sizes. I like the little one. I have the little one. Here, let me get stuff out of there so I can see what I'm doing. Okay. And here, I, I can actually hold. Whoops. So you, you use them to hold your stuff. They're fantastic, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. So the, and, like the, yeah. They don't, and it's it's just nice because if not, I tend to put something like I've got stuff sitting next. I should have moved mine in here, and it's just sitting. And then I'm like, okay, well, where did my pencil go? Where did my scissors go? And right. It just sticks right out, and you just pull them out. It's just, yep. Yeah. Until I in. until I got these, I was just laying all my tools on the table, and you're you're forever shuffling through them and knocking them on the floor and everything. These things are fantastic. This is, um. Eight inches long. The big one is eight inches long. It's it's so Emma. I T apostrophe S S E W Emma. Uh, it's it's so Emma dot com. But you get them get them from Sassy Jacks. And uh, so that's eight inches long. And then the one best likes is four inches long. And I like that because you know I have you know have other things around, and then it's a smaller space, takes up less space, and all I need is my scissors or my tweezers and. Yeah. A pencil. It's perfect. And that's rubbery. Perfect. Right. Rubbery stuff. And and it, it so it separates like for instance, my seam ripper is is quite fat, but it just goes you just squeeze things and it goes in there and it holds up. Right. Yeah. Wonderful little device. Nice. I don't know. I don't remember what they cost because I've had it a while. But um, uh, I don't remember either. Yeah, really well made though. You know, it's it's going to hold up for a long time. But uh, these are really cool, Sassy Jacks. I want to show you my my ruler. Okay, this is that old fashioned wood oh. ruler. Remember those? Yes. I got this on a press junket to Germany from a. a, a it was a gift to editors. Each one of these segments is a different wood, and on the back it oh, says very. about it says about the wood. It's the coolest thing. Like this is chestnut, and then maple, and larch, and oak, and alder, uh, beech, ash. False acacia or acacia, is that cool or what? Yes, I love it. I birch, love it. Birch and cherry. Nice. Cool, huh? Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's, it's just it's just <laughs> nice to have stuff like that around. Yeah, you know, yeah. just different. You know. And it's German made, so I checked it against like really good rulers. Spot on. It's just dead spot on. Yeah. But uh, just one of my favorite things. Yeah, that's what. so that's what I've been measuring with tonight because I had it out for something else. I love this thing. Yeah. All the different yeah, well, ones. And it looks neat. It looks it looks neat to just have sitting out, you know. Yeah, yeah. Fun thing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, very cool. Yep. So how long is it? How long uh, is your ruler? Looks pretty long. 79 inches. The yard? 79 39? inches. 39? 79. 79. Long, dude. Long thing. Yeah, 79 inches. Yep. Cool. Fun thing. Very cool. Let's see. What else we got? Very we got anything else? Yeah. I don't see anything. Yeah. Okay. I think we're caught up. All right. I think so. Um, okay, well, thanks, folks. Sorry that we didn't get the um, needle lace in. We'll get that in in a few weeks, but we're booked up now for seven, for at least four weeks, if not five, uh, with Wednesday night shows. So we'll fit Carrie in uh, once we've had a chance to uh, 
uh, do some proper testing with her and can do it right and not uh, diddle around like that. I really apologize for that. Um, not what we'd like to have happen, but uh, uh, it just didn't work out. So we'll, we'll get that in and we'll announce it ahead of time. But we've got other things lined up here for the next few Wednesdays, so we just can't shift everything. It just And April's coming up now. They're, they'll be back, they hope in August for another tour and maybe two tours in August. So we got, you know, it just piles up. Um, so we'll work that out. So if you want needle lace, we'll get it to you, but it's just not going to be right away now. The slot kind of had to pass there. So uh, Friday night, Beth and I will be on uh, right here, eight o'clock, more needlepoint, painted canvas. But this time we'll talk more about what we're going to do with our canvases. And if you're going to do it with us, uh, bring your canvas and then um, uh, we'll work it out. So 8 o'clock Friday night. Uh, do not miss the uh, podcast Sunday because it's going to be fascinating. So, all right, get your thing in for the drawing. I'm going to go right over there to the computer and draw it right now. We're done. We're out. Thanks, Beth. Thanks to everybody Bye. for joining us. Appreciate it. Nice seeing everybody. Bye. Bye.